Women don't want to get out and do the hard, hard things that make the world go round. And to their defense, they shouldn't have to. You want a good litmus test of whether you're a good leader? Can you walk amongst your people or not without security? There's an entrepreneur, manager, and technician in the business. I've worked in all three. And is the vision then to build a portfolio that you can then sell on to a hedge fund or sell on to a bigger corporation? There's no trauma or race or gender that you cannot outwork. I often say fuck time and fuck blood. I'm looking for people my soul is aligned with. And Those women yeah. are just lying to themselves long enough to have the right kind of man come into their life. Yeah. What would happen if we found out there's a meteor coming and we had to work with Russia and China and Africa and India to collectively put a bomb together big enough to attack that meteor before it hit Earth? We'd become Team Earth real motherfucking fast. You build the man you're going to become and nobody's coming to save you and that's the best news you'll ever get. Understand that you have complete control of your life. Quick one before we jump into this podcast. Do me a solid favor. Hit that like button. Hit subscribe and drop a comment below this video. If you're looking to remove images Video search results or fake accounts online. Go to contentremoval.com, but don't take my word for it. Here's on Mosey. Frank, you're a legend. I just saw this. Layla also thinks you're a legend, which in my mind means you're. <laughs> which also, which means you're a double legend in my mind. If you get my wife to think you're a legend, then you're you're extra cool in my mind. Dude, thank you so much. Genuinely, that was um, such a pain. Welcome back to the Frankly Podcast, and have I got a treat for you today? This man has built what I can only describe as the American dream from starting in construction and building a multi-million pound real estate business. Justin Waller, welcome to the podcast, my man. Glad to be here, man. Mate, I'm I'm, I'm so hyped to have you on because there's loads I want to talk to you about, but obviously from the outside looking in and following your journey online and seeing everything that you do, obviously I've noticed that you've built this phenomenal real estate portfolio on the back of doing what most people call a traditional business and it's it's something you don't normally see in this day and age because everyone's out there trying to be an instagram model trying to be um an, an online personality and i think we've got away from this traditional way of business so i just wanted to understand like what made you go into construction and building your business from from that kind of basis growing in south louisiana it's, it's all we knew to do there was no other option for me so I graduated high school in the early 2000s, graduated college in 2009. Instagram really had not taken off yet at that time. You know, really the world's changed mostly, let's say, in the last seven to ten years, right? So Instagram was not what it was now today. And construction was the only consciousness I had around how to make money. I always say on shows, it's like construction was the only way we knew how to make doctor money in boots. You know, that was it. That's the only way we knew how to make that kind of money in the neighborhood I grew up in. You know, there were no lawyers. There was, there was nobody talking about stock markets or even politics. So for me, it was just the only consciousness I had. And a lot of times you find that from people is they follow the track that they saw work in some way. And I knew that there was guys doing construction at big levels, making money in my town because they had big ass pickup trucks. And, you know, there's no Lamborghinis in Denham Springs, Louisiana, you know, or even in Baton Rouge, really. I, I can't, I can't think of the last time I saw a Lamborghini in Baton Rouge. So um, a lot of times I think it's consciousness and then the business model of online had really, really not taken off to where it is today. So it was the only way I knew. So I took that path and whether it was the best path or not, doesn't matter because I stuck to it and, and here we are. Did you start traditionally on the tools yourself, working in the trenches yourself, getting, getting, getting things moving? So the first time I was on a, a construction job, I was 13 years old. I was packing panels for my stepdad in a backyard and that kind of, I would do that on and off in the summers between playing football or, you know, whatever sport I was doing or even in college. But when I first started the business, I would have two sets of clothes in my, my vehicle, one set of clothes, actually three, really one set of clothes to go to the bank and beg for money. So I could cover payroll. The other one was to show up to a, a project and bid a job, which would have been more of a, a formal with boots kind of situation. And the third would be a tool belt. Or just in case somebody didn't show up to a project, and I had to go help in some way. I won't sit here and be and act like I'm the best guy on tools in my company. Most men in my company that do it every day would be better than me. But I've certainly put on my fair share of roof, my fair share of steel, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, moving things with the fork. Like, yeah, I've been on job sites, plenty, plenty, plenty. But to, to scale, we had we you know there's an entrepreneur, manager, and technician in the business. I've worked in all three, right? Certainly um, more as an entrepreneur at this point at year 13. But 
plenty of days as a technician getting sunburned for sure, especially as a kid, actually. Yeah, I think it's it's interesting, isn't it, how we've we've stepped away. I started as an apprentice as a carpenter and joined yep. myself and obviously worked through, had my own shop fitting company and everything like that. And it's amazing what you learn by being in in a in a physical environment where you have to go and actually physically work or you actually go and create something in the physical environment. You know, you learn a lot about yourself in those environments. Bro, it's hot. You get a really good understanding of what the guys are going through. And for that reason, you know, some of my best days, like, to clear my head, like, meditation-wise, is actually just going and putting a belt on and just putting a roof panel on for a day. It's hot. You can't think about anything else. You can't have your cell phone. You know, you're just – it's thoughtless sometimes. Like, you're paying attention to safety, quality, production, right? Yeah. But it's not like when me and you stop this podcast, I'll have 70 notifications – or maybe even 100 on my phone, whether it be email, telegram, WhatsApp, text message, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, Twitter, things I have to answer, fires to put out. Sometimes working in the field can be a relief to me because it, free, it kind of frees my mind in a way to just push and do something physical, you know. So it is good. But also in addition to that, like being around the guys, going out there, you know, flying to a job site, taking them to lunch, putting a hundred bucks in their bag and say, don't tell your wife about this. You know, that kind of thing is, is always good as well, man. How long did you have to build the business to get to a point where you could start kicking cash flow off into real estate and start looking at that as an option to grow your, grow your back end wealth? Looking back, I probably, probably could have done it about seven years ago, truly. But the kind of real estate I wanted to buy, I wanted to be able to throw big chunks of money at it. So I'd say in the last four years, I could have really, you know, started really throwing big chunks, seven figure numbers into real estate. Because I, I noticed on another podcast, you mentioned that the other day, I think it was the other day on Rob Moore's, I heard you say that you'd bought 129 doors that week or something like that. In a month. Yeah. In a month. Yeah. Yeah. And we're, we're about to close on another 60 and we have another 40 uh, under contract. So what, so what kind of, when you're looking at real estate in terms of your ideal kind of things that you're looking for and you think that all like people should look for to buy, what kind of parameters do these real estate deals have to fit into? There's a lot of things. So the tenant avatar is one, like who I want to deal with, what kind of person I want to deal with. Where do they work? Do I trust the industry in which they work in? So I always say I don't like the idea of Miami because I don't want a crypto pump tenant and I don't want a sugar baby tenant, right? I want hardworking people that I can trust that'll go to work inside of a market that I trust the industry in which they're working in, you know? Like, so South Louisiana is really good because the mouth of the Mississippi river is there. There's always going to be industry there. There's always going to be the plants there. There's always going to be product going on to barges, which means that people need to get up and go to work every day and they pay good money. So that's one thing from there. I'm looking at, you know, what's the net operating income? You know, can can I deal with this cap rate? You know, right now I'm buying at six caps. Well, ideally I'd be buying from somewhere from eight to 12, you know, but if I can get a six cap and then cash flow after debt service and high interest rate environments, I know that even though people are scared to buy right now, if I'm cash flowing at a six cap and getting a good return after debt service, wait until I raise the rents. Because the first thing I'm going to do is raise the rents, right? I'm going to raise the rents, and then we might have an election that goes in favor of, let's say, Republicans, which would drop interest rates, and then I'm going to refinance that debt service and, and cash flow even more. So right now I, th- I feel like people are still waiting for prices to drop against interest rates, and sometimes maybe they are because as the interest rates rise, the price has to drop because something's got to give, right? So we're finding properties that still cash flow even with a high interest rate or – I'm having the owner owner finance to us IO, so interest only. Until that condition changes, then I'll refinance out into better long term debt, and then we'll just look like geniuses, man. Like I'm really excited about where where our portfolio is right now and what we're doing. And is the vision then to build a portfolio that you can then sell on to a hedge fund or sell on to a bigger corporation and, and kind of sell it as a package? Right now, I have no intention of selling. A lot of times, what happens is people sell. And then they, they get themselves in a 1031 exchange kind of scenario where they have that, you know, 100, I guess, six months to determine where they're going to put that money, right? For me, I'd much rather see us uh, make the property appreciate, force appreciation. 
So upgrade, upgrade each apartment as somebody moves out or add eight new. So the trailer park we're buying, there's eight more spots. We're going to add those eight spots. And then there's extra land that we're going to be able to put RVs on. We're going to raise the value of that property, including raising rents, right? And then we'll flip some trailers or get some trailers out of there that don't need to be there. And so we'll raise the net operating income of the property, which will raise the value of the property. So this particular one we're buying for around $4 million. By the time we do all the work, the value add, it's probably going to be worth six or seven. So we'll have that money that we could either borrow against long term, which we won't. We, we want to, you know, get, you know, get the property completely stabilized. We don't need to live off the money right now. Um, but we'll raise the value of the property. And as we get older and older and older and the property gets older and older and we continue to raise the rents, we still bought it for four million dollars, even if it's worth 10. And that's what you'll see is you'll see a lot of the big guys. Let's say Trump buys a building for 10 million. And over time, that property ends up being worth 20 million. Well, the bank will give him 75 percent loan to value on the appraisal of the property. Let's say he pulls out seven million and lives on it. Well, he could live on that money and die, and then trust it off to his kids, and then the property is still worth twenty million. So they call it buy, borrow, die. Because you, you were saying that it's the oldest subscription model in the world. That's it what is. that's what piqued my piqued my ears when I was here when I was listening to you talk about real estate. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So so what what part of it is the subscription? Just the rents that you get constantly, the rents, rent bro. Rent? It's the OG of subscription model, bro. That's why people would talk about it forever. But you know, you know what it has at a normal subscription thing. You know what it has that an app doesn't have? It has depreciation against the income. You know, I'm American. So no matter where I go, I'm gonna pay taxes. No matter what I do in the world, I'm gonna pay taxes. So depreciation is is very, very powerful. Robert Kiyosaki and Kim McElroy call it buying good debt. And I completely agree with that because they're buying debt that's cash flowing for them. And they're using the depreciation on on the property that they're indebted to to offset the income that's spitting out from the property. So it's it's a very beautiful thing they're doing. You know, uh, Tom Woolwright has a book called Tax Free Wealth. I've read it. It's yeah, phenomenal. It's boy, huh? that, that, that is the best book on taxes I've ever read. Yeah, I think I'm going to read it again. We have a 16 hour flight from Dubai to L.A. to do more podcasts. Tom Wheelwright is an absolute G, G of, yeah, bro, of a G. guy, man. Like he yeah. is, he is the best financial guy, bro. And so is Kid McElroy, bro. I look up to Kid McElroy so much. He's the coolest fucking dude. Chill, guys, guy, right? Just I, had, I actually had an opportunity to go hang out with him, and um, I think we're in San Diego. Just hung out with him, drunk too much tequila, talked real estate, half. He's just a fucking dude, bro. He's, he's a shit man, and. For being as successful and as accomplished as he is, he's just cool as fuck, bro. So, you know, if I can grow up and be like Kim McElroy, that wouldn't be a bad deal, right? The, no, mate, not at all. But what's obviously in the lead up to this podcast, us doing this, I'll, I've been obviously consuming some of your content, and there's a few, there's a few things that that hit me right between the eyeballs. One of them was the real estate and how you broke that down, which you've just said. But one of the things that you said, which really punched me is I'm a resident of Dubai and I'm a citizen of Australia, citizen of the UK as well. But one of the things that really punched me was when you said about, because a lot of people say the American dream's over, to be, to be fair, around the yeah. world. Like yeah, they see yeah, what's yeah. going on over there. It's, 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 some parts of it have turned into a bit of a shithole in, yeah. in, 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 in fairness. But one thing that really punched me was the fact of, like you said, Dubai is one of the best cities in the world, granted. But, it's still a small, it's still a small city, and America's got three hundred million people, and you can just make things happen. So, what is is that something you see for for, for America that's never going to change? The fact that the dream still exists, and that you can always make bigger things happen there than anywhere else in the world. There's nothing I want to do more than be loyal to my country. Number one, I grew up an American. I want to stay an American. I feel like. If you look at the scoreboard, America is still up. Have we let the gap, the lead, fall a little bit? Yes, but I believe it's on Americans to make it right, and I think that can happen. I think that the powers that be, whoever they is, I think people, because of the Internet and information, people are starting to get hip to that. And if America could come together before we rot from the inside, I don't think there's a bigger, more powerful nation to ever exist in America. We have the biggest military. Too many people are tied to our dollar. 
too many people buy our bonds, too many people are attached to us. So, yes, BRICS might be a concern. It gets my attention. Yes, India acting like the new China gets my attention. Yes, the things between China and Russia get my attention. Yes, China being in Africa so thick gets my attention with the natural resources that are there. I get it, but we're still fucking America, and they need not forget it. And if America's, if Americans come to remember what America was like when people were proud to throw the flag in their front yard instead of some dumbass Ukraine flag, then America can still be great. We can still put a strong Republican leader in office, regardless of whether it's Trump or somebody else, just somebody with a backbone to stand up for the country again. I'm tired of being an American that has to apologize of being proud to be a fucking American. If you don't want to be America, get the fuck out. We're still the fucking goat, and it's up to us to keep it that way. So, yes, if America decides they want to get their shit together and have a backbone and stand up for what's actually right and have some common sense, and if the people that have their mouth shut, they're mad and being quiet, start to speak up as loudly as the retards that we have to accommodate to, the small, small percent of people that want attention, that want to cry like a little bitch, America was built on the back of people that want to work and grow and be better, and people were proud to be American. And until the day comes where I think I can no longer try to speak up and fight for America, then I'm going to continue to try to fight for America and get people to get behind America. Because we are the fucking goat. If we decentralize today, America just geographically is set up to be just fine. We have the most powerful river in the world. We have everything you need from farming to oil to military and, and a great setup for people not to be able to attack us. It's up to America to make America what it used to be. And I don't think it's too late. But if the day comes and, and I can no longer stick up for because it it's just too far gone, then I might have to make other accommodations. Until then, I want to be somebody that stands up for his country and is as, you know, patriotic and, and wants to see America win because that's where I'm from. And I don't want to be a fucking sellout. So it's up to us to do that. Does it worry you when you when you look at America and you see people like Bill Gates buying all the farmland and everything like that? There's a lot of lot of wealth dispersion, but it seems like the top one percent are grabbing every every bit of that dispersion as it goes along. Yeah, I, I think that's concerning, mostly because of the agenda the guy has. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? What do you what what do you think his agenda is? I just think he's socialist, bro. And I think I think he's a fucking worm. And in that because that they're, they're the parts of America that worry me the most is like the people like Bill Gates and and, and those kind yeah, of people. Yeah, I get it. That, I get it. But then then we got guys like Elon, right? Yeah. And then and we have people with large voices like Joe Rogan. Yeah, like I trust those guys, and, and there's still people like Trump out there, and DeSantis is you know obviously out there. Like there's still people, right? I just does it not worry you though that 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 Elon wants to put chips in people's heads? I mean, like is he on the side of the light or is he on the side of the darkness? Because I know you, I know you're 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 a man that that stands in in you know you believe in God and you, you're religious in, to some respect as well, um, coming from where you're from. And, and like, I, I believe that religion is good. You know, I I believe that religion is a structure that created a society for us to live in. And I think that we're getting away from that. And I think that's part of the rot. Um, I think somebody could argue whether they think there's a God in heaven or not. Like there's some guy sitting in a chair going to send you to heaven or hell. But I do think the, the basis of religion, whether it be Christianity or Islam or whatever, is a great structure to live by and for societies to run healthy in the proper way. In regards to Elon putting chips in people's head, I I would hope that's not the case. I'm pretty sure that's in Revelations. That you know, this, this is what I'm talking about. It's only when I've it's only when I've read um, the Bible and and the Quran and, and 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 other texts that I realize that a lot of these things have been spoken about for thousands of years in these texts that are happening in our lifetimes that me and you are sat in right now. Right. And I'm like, I'm, I'm, but the but the people who are talking about doing these things that I taught that they said would happen towards the end of time, the people seem like they're they're the light, but in reality, are they the light or the darkness? I'm just trying to discern that right now. Yeah, I, look, I've I've not actually heard a whole lot about this chip thing. That's new to me, so I'm gonna have to go dig myself. One thing that I do like about Elon and that I'd like to keep in a positive light about him is. It seems that he made one of the big, biggest purchases that someone could make and is going to be a keeper and a protector of free speech. And I hope that's the case for Elon. Don't mind the mission he's on either. 
I think it's a great thing for us to try to figure out why we're flying through space on a rock and what else is out there. I think that's going to be really, really important. In fact, I made a tweet yesterday that said, I think that they'll laugh at us in 200 years. We're fighting, killing each other over oil instead of collectively coming together and figuring out why we're flying through space on a rock. What would happen? You know what I'm saying? What would happen if we found out there's a meteor coming and we had to work with Russia and China and Africa and India to collectively put a bomb together big enough to attack that meteor before it hit Earth? We'd become Team Earth real motherfucking fast, wouldn't we? So in the grand scheme of things, I do think they'll laugh at us as long as we don't kill each other first. I, th- I think that's it. We're, 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 I think the battles that we're having on this, on this, in, in this environment and this realm that we're in are battles that are nonsensical. They don't make any. Sense oh, they make no world. sense at all. And that's why I think that they'll look at us like we were medieval. You know, you know, we look at like like people in the med- medieval times. I'm like, man, they don't know anything, man. They were killing each other over goats and shit, right? People will look at us in the same way. They'll be like, hey, those guys were killing each other. Humans killing humans over oil. You know what I'm saying? And like, I, I do think that there'll be a time where they'll look at us in that way and, and talk about some of the things that were going on behind closed doors and, and some of the things that shouldn't have happened that happened now. Why do you think that men have been so demasculated in society over the last 10 years? So I can tell you one thing that I, I look at directly is when we went off the gold standard, we went from a man being able to go out and work with his hands, be a carpenter, hang steel, pour concrete, work in a factory. When we went off the dollar, inflation started going up, which means the cost of a house was more. That means that we had to go from a one-income household to a two-income household, right? That demasculates the man. It makes everything that makes, worth, makes it worth it to get up and go to work every day not so much as worth it when he can't even work hard enough to let his wife stay home and raise his kids, right? Yeah. So now only maybe 10 to a 1% man can allow that to happen, right? Where he can, he can retire his wife and let her do one of the most important jobs in the fucking world, which is raise a child and, and, and create a home and a safe environment for a family. By the way, women are very important in that way. Very important job. So when we made it where women have to start working, it's kind of hard for them to look up to the man as much. And case in point, that it would be a good thing for the government to do that is now you get taxes from two people and they're going to give you a little bullshit $4,000 to $8,000 tax credit for it. But the fact of the matter is you've kind of made the father, not the hero anymore, kind of not the man of the house anymore. Now you have two men in the house fighting over it. Now women want to call men shit, but I do think that's an agenda. They're being pitched this. Oh, men are suppressing you. Men are doing all women don't want to get out and do the hard, hard things that make the world go round. And to their defense, they shouldn't have to because men should be doing these dangerous jobs. I'm okay with it. What I don't agree with is demasculating men and making men have to go to work every day and not even being able to be proud and a leader in their own house. That's what I think is really messing up marriages, causing all the divorce, causing the divide between men and women. In addition, with all the technology coming out, I feel like the bigger companies that are telling women to freeze their eggs, telling women to get abortion, telling women to do all the things that would keep them out of the household, out of the motherly role, benefit from it because they now have enough technology that maybe we don't need the backs of men as much as we used to, particularly in said businesses. So, It's quite convenient for the government to get two paychecks to tax from instead of one. And it's quite convenient to go off the Bretton Woods Agreement and go to the get off the gold standard and inflate the economy of the entire world, which is basically was at one point tied to it. And now you see people like BRICS trying to go do their own thing. So it's 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 not the best thing. But again, I wanna I would like to see America fight for America. I'm tired of people being American and shitting on their country. It's bullshit. There, there are a lot of people out there right now that are American that constantly create content around anti-America and everything like that. So you're right. In America. In America, right, yeah. In America. I get it. But here's the thing. Let's say me and you are brothers, right? Yeah. Let's say I completely disagree with everything you're doing. I think you're fucking up. Do I disown you as a brother or do I shake you? Which one I would has like more to love? think that you called me out on that. Right. I come to you and say, hey, this is bullshit. Let's fix it. These people are just turning their back on America and shitting on a country. 
That's, that's what I don't agree with. Now, listen, if you get to a point as my brother that you're so far gone that it's going to pull me down and I know it's not going to help you, then maybe I'll let you go. But I'm not to that place with America yet. I still think America can, is and can continue to be the GOAT if we collectively get together and quit fight between the races, between the genders, between the religions, between the – even, even the, the parties. Like common sense is common sense, bro. Like, I th- I th- but it's all these factions that are off playing one against the other. It's all, it's, it, that's all part of the, the, the agenda. Right, right, and that's what sells. That's, right? that's, that's what keeps it spinning. Right. Because and you wouldn't it, want people telling you too much truth, or you might get rid of somebody like Tucker Carlson, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah? You, you, might, you might shut down a Tate. You might try to indict a former president, wouldn't you? In really good timing. You might have a big sickness that shuts down all the businesses. Your relationship with Andrew has, has been going for, what, what, 10 years now? No, less than that. I'd say four. Four years? Yeah, three, four years, yeah. How did you even meet in the first place? I joined the war room. I oh, see. So, so even as a man, as successful you were in your own right, you were still looking for that, what you term as brotherhood? Yeah, man. I'll tell you, with the views that I have and some, some of the views particularly I have around, you know, how I'm going to spend my personal life. I felt pretty alone and being a business owner, being a business owner can really isolate you because you get to a place where you have problems that other people don't have. And I was just looking at people that looking for people that look for the truth in the world as I did. And so I found the war room and I was looking for more like-minded people. I'd done Vistage and BNI groups and I'd go in there and just see guys cry and complain about just dumb shit, you know, and I just didn't feel a part of those rooms. It just, it just, didn't want to be a part of those groups with those men. And so I found the war room and I'm like, okay, here's a network where people are like-minded making money. They want to work out. They want to work on their fitness. They want to work on their style. They want to become more worldly. They want to come together for what is actually true in this world. And so when I joined the war room, just like any other member, I ended up meeting Andrew and Tristan at an event. I met Tristan first and then I met Andrew. And, you know, ever since then, basically been together off and on all year you know i'd be there for a month or two or three or we go on a car rally or whatever we talk every day and uh, sometimes you just you know when you know you're going to be friends with somebody and you know you click and you get close i often say fuck time and fuck blood i'm looking for people my soul is aligned with and that's regardless of gender or race or anything you know i think as humans we just get it we are souls and we just get issued a body it's just issued bodies man and so me and him come from very different places with very different backgrounds, but in a lot of ways we are very, very, very much the same. And when you see that alignment of your soul with someone, then I don't need to, to know him for 10 years to know that he's a person I'll be friends with forever. It's not a problem for me. Certainly not a problem for him. What were some of the, the key things that joining that kind of helped you really get straight on from day one? Man, geopolitics, how the world actually is running under understanding male and female dynamics even deeper, even deeper. And listen, girls have never been an issue in my life, right? But having the life that I want, a jewel shooter, tutorial shooter, yep. he's also in Dubai. Uh, you should interview him, by the way. About, uh, I asked him. He, he, said he, he said he's all podcasted out at the moment. Yeah, he'll get to you eventually. But uh, he's a very busy guy. He, he runs a big organization, you know, handling security and all kinds of things on a geopolitical level. But he, um, he would also tell you that you can create a custom made reality for your life, you know, where you can create a life that you want and that everybody in your, in this inside your frame and everybody that is inside your frame is happy to be in it. You know, and I think that being around those guys, Tristan and and Jewel and Andrew and Sterling has really, really been helpful to not only me, but the guys that uh, attend War Room events, uh, guys in the halls of the War Room, guys that are thinking about joining or just watching our content at large, really helping them find a reality in which not only they are getting the reality they want, but they can authentically be themselves and let people fall into the frame of that reality and be happy to be there. And I can tell you from firsthand experience, my business relationships are better after joining the War Room. My... Trust levels are better after joining the war room with other people. More people want to do business with me, and the women in my life are much happier 
as a result because I live fully authentically in my custom made reality. And that's something the war room provides to you in every way. What are some of the steps to create in that custom made reality for the people that aren't in that environment? Well, the first is you have to take full accountability for yourself. If you take full accountability for yourself and that's what things that we're teaching the guys in the halls every, every day, it's like, how do you create a scenario in your own life where you're fully accountable for yourself and you're taking care of your business, your fitness, how you speak, how you dress, how you address another man, how you shake hands, look him in the eye, and you come with full confidence. Because once you've built yourself up, you have all the chips in your life in your favor. You don't, you're not dependent on small, petty things that used to you know, take over you or you used to have to give into. So once you take care of yourself fully in all areas, then it's very easy to go out to the world and say, hey, listen, I know who I am. This is how my life is going to be. This is what I want for my life. Are you interested? And you say that with conviction to a business partner, a woman, um, a colleague, anybody of that nature, they will see that confidence in that thing that you have built with inside yourself and look at you and say, you know what? I want to be part of that. I can tell this man is not fucking around. He means it. He lives it. And we teach these guys to live it in the war room every day. And for that reason, they are creating custom realities in their own lives. The war room is absolutely the best network that has ever been invented by man. There's not a better men's group in the world. And that might sound over the top, but I can tell you as a person that was already a millionaire, that was already six foot three, 220 pounds with a six pack, that was already in abundance of women. It is the best group I've ever been into. And I was already these things. There's so much, so much more than what you just see in social media in the war room. It's a brotherhood like you cannot imagine. And it's a real one. It's not one of these bullshit show up to coffee and, and grown men cry type things. It's get better now. And here's how. War Room's the best group in the world. Well, what would you say to the women out there that are, th- they think to themselves that they're this, well, this, this, this label, this boss bitch, this, I'm smashing life, I'm single, I can be on my own and make money, and this is the kind of pattern of events. And Those and, women yeah. are just lying to themselves long enough to have the right kind of man come into their life. They will put all, I can tell you firsthand, I've met plenty of women like this. You meet these girls, and I, I don't blame them, by the way. They're trying to hold on to their independence because they have not met a man that is valuable enough for them to feel safe to let go and fall into their female frame. I don't blame them, not one bit. I'm not ever going to be here to shit on women. Women act this way because they're told to act this way because they're told men are shit. And by and large, men are shit because they have not done the things to create an environment where they can walk up to that woman and tell her, you're going to live inside this frame if you're with me. If you're with me, and you don't have to, but if you're with me, it's going to be like this. And it is no de- there's no debate. There's no negotiation. I care for you. I want to take care of you. And I'm going to lead this. And this is how I'm going to lead. If you can get there, a woman will happily let go of that boss bitch. You know, I can be independent, blah, blah, blah. She's going to want to get behind a strong man that she can trust. And to be a strong man that a woman can trust, you actually have to be about what you say you're about. And that's what we're building in the war room. We build men. Strong men, not in spite of women, but for women. Because what does that create? It creates real families with children that can grow up in a strong environment where the mother can be loving, caring, nurturing, like women are naturally here to do. Not that it's less than a man, just as powerful as what a man has to do, but so, so, so important for a woman to be feminine and nurturing. But a man has to come along that allows her to let go of that boss bitch energy and she has to feel safe that she's made the right decision. And that's why you create strong men for women, not in spite of them. Yeah. Do you think that you have to, as a man, heal some of your generational traumas as well as you go through this path? Or do you, or do you think that as a man, you should stack, you should just keep building on the, on the fitness, on the, on the mindset, on the, creating your own reality what do you mean by generational traumas so these cer- certain things that might happen in a man's childhood that might lead him to act a certain way in, in his reality now th- those repeated patterns that you c- kind of see in society these days well, i think there's a problem with identifying yourself as having a generational trauma in the first place right yeah because you're tagging yourself with something i just had a i wouldn't call it an argument but a bit of a debate with a young black woman about her leading with race and her automatically acting like you know, that's going to handicap her. Oh, I'll say the same thing about trauma because just like I don't want to see a young black man think he can't conceive, succeed because he's black. I would not let any man 
walk around tagging himself thinking that he's got some kind of trauma when he could just take his life into his own hands and work his ass off. There's no trauma or race or gender that you cannot outwork. Yeah. It's, it's not one. There's not one. And the thought that there is is a handicap in itself. We don't allow it in the war room. There's 72 countries in the war room, all races, you know, creeds, different background, colors, creeds, yeah. colors, religions, the whole thing. There's not one man in there that we will allow to have a pity party over how he got started. Regardless, regardless, we will treat them with. I won't say that it doesn't exist in the world. I'm saying I will not let you tag yourself with it because I love you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so that's regardless of whether you think you have trauma or a racial or a religious or a geo geo geographical geography disadvantage of where you were born we won't allow it and so for that reason there's freedom in it because now you have taken the ball into your own court fully you have control of your life let us teach you how to steer it that's one, the war room one of the one of the labels that they tried to give me for argument's sake as a child was this bullshit adhd crap. me too me too i got put on riddling at eight and 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 when you when, and because I took it on initially because I was a child and I didn't know any better. Well, yeah, what are you going to do? You got yeah, a doctor you, you, you and get, your you, mom telling you. You, 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 take, yeah. you take on this fucking label and you go through your whole life. You get to a point, I think I got to about 25 and I thought, this is fucking bollocks. There, 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 there's, noth- there's nothing in this. That, this cannot define who I am as a man but by some random letters that are just given to me by this guy over here. Who, 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 and all, all I found out ADHD was, like, if you're not interested in what you're doing, You'll have attention deficit, so right. t- you, you won't. The subject's con- boring because the subject's. The, if you're yep. bored, you're not going to want to fucking do it. Right. right. So, so, so find something that lights you up. Find something that you want to fucking do, and then, then all of a sudden, you're not bored anymore. Right. I could podcast all day long. I could do other stuff all day long because I'm actually interested in it. But, but when it comes down to, if you put me in a room where I'm not interested in something, then obviously, we, right. you'll be the same, right? You'll be, you'll be like, thousand oh, percent. Yeah, I want to get out of here. I want to move on. So, like, what? How can people smash through those labels and get and get them out of their life? Because I think there's a lot of people that listen to this that need that push to to, to drop these labels because they've took them on, they've adopted them like a child. Yeah. Well, number one, putting a child on a drug before he's an adult it's child abuse, straight up. If you're putting your kids on Ritalin, Adderall, Concerta, any of that bullshit, it's fucking child abuse. Number two, if you're feeding your kids shit food. And they can't focus and they're foggy brained in class and they're obese. An obese child is child abuse and should be punishable by court. Like I I cannot stand to be in South Louisiana and walking through the store and see a fat child. You're fucking that kid from the jump. A fat child is child abuse and the parent should do time for it. There's no I don't want to hear about his fucking thyroid bullshit. If that kid was in Africa and was malnourished, he'd be skinny as a rail. So let's start there. And child abuse also, number two is if you put a kid on medicine at any any grade school age, this child abuse. You're putting them big pharma from the jump. You're making them think they have a crutch that's bullshit. They don't have a learning disorder. You're dead on. They're not interested in the bullshit subject you're teaching. You're telling a little boy to sit still in class and when really he needs to be going outside and doing things with his hands that men has always done. But instead, you put them on a fucking drug. Yeah. Trash. You're a piece of shit parent. I'll never do that to my kids, ever, any of them. So- How do you fix it? You have to realize that something happened where you were put on drugs. I was same thing. Ridlin, eight years old, bro. I was in elementary school. They put me on this shit. Told me I was a 504 student. That I, I, that basically I was almost special needs in some way. Tell that to my fucking bank account. Tell them, tell them that all the teachers and my trash mother who needed everybody in the family to be sick basically talked my little brother into having epilepsy, put him on pills, L- literally would, would would do these things. And why do mothers do this? I have no clue. Maybe they need the attention. I have no idea. But if you're a young man that has been labeled with something, you can, from inside, build yourself up in a way that you have enough confidence in your life where you don't even need a parent. I don't even need a father anymore. I'm my own navigation. I'm my own compass. I take care of my father. I'm the motherfucking man. I take care of my family. That's all I need. And the war room helps build guys that do that. You can build yourself from inside so much where you have taken care of everything in your life so much that you now trust yourself to look for yourself and make your own decisions. And now you're your own navigational compass to the decisions you make, the life you will live, and the reality that you will create in your own presence of life. 
the end. So for any young man that's struggling with being put on medicine or thinks that he's ADHD, it's all bullshit. It's lie. It's a smoke. It's a smoke mirror for big pharma. You are a man. You can take control of your life in every way. And there's absolutely no doubt in my mind. I've done it myself. With regards to your the stuff that happened with your mum, you, obviously we we're talking about these generational traumas and you're saying that they don't exist and stuff like that. And that No, I, I don't have any trauma over my childhood. No. No, bro. No, the shit happened. I was a little kid. I, I was sad. I might have cried a couple times. You know, I might have got fucked up, beat, beat my, had my ass beat a little bit. What? Why? So? I'm a grown man now. You know what I'm saying? Like, what yeah. am I going to do? Cry about it? So, I mean, I was a little kid. There was, there was violence. Of course, the adults could kick my ass. You know? Of course. You know? But I don't, I don't like, hold on to that shit. take it on. Fuck no. Hell no. And, like, I saw all kinds of violence had it done towards me, my sisters, my stepdad on my dad right in front of us, my mom, and between stepdad, dad, parents, you know, like, knives pulled, cops called, you know, courthouse, 12 custody courts, sexual molestation cases, the whole thing. Fuck it. I got no trauma, bro. No trauma. None. I created my life. I created my reality. I don't need to look back in the past and feel sorry for myself at all. Like, I don't live in trauma. The shit's over. I can talk about it. And the only reason I'm even willing to talk about it is because there's some young man somewhere that he's heard dealing with it. who's dealing with yeah. it that heard about trauma. And took it on as a label. And took it on as a label. You can set yourself free, son. Now you can take control of your life. You're a man now. If you're a man enough, I don't care what age you are, you'll be 14 in hearing this. If you're a man enough to hear this message, you're man enough to take control of your own life and know that you're the king of your life. You build the man you're going to become, and nobody's coming to save you, and that's the best news you will ever get. You're free to do it. Let it go. Go build your kingdom because there's nothing you can't do. Trauma's not real as long as you become a man strong enough to forget about it. And I think the most beautiful thing about that statement is the fact that it gives people the permission. It to is let permission. That, to let that go. Let it go. Let it go, son. You can do it. You're stronger than you think you are. And very soon, very, very soon, you'll look back at the man you were at 14, 15, 16, 17, when you're 25 to 35, and be so proud of the man that you were at such a young age. Be proud of that right now and go build the man that you're going to become. Because if you're conscious enough to hear this, you're conscious enough to become a man right now. Do it. And women need that as well. Like women need Absolutely. men to be men these days. So I think that's what all women right. need. Dude, if you love women, and I do, I do, man. I might love them too much. But that <laughs> joking aside, right? Yeah. I love them as people. I get messages from women on my Instagram all the time. They ask me for business advice. I stop and take the time. I, I do. Well, what do you think about this, real estate or whatever? I do, man. I'm cool with it. Like, I'm, I'm not out here hating on women. I love the idea of helping young ladies. No problem at all with it. Or women, or single moms even. Like, I don't care. If somebody's a single mom and they message me about real estate or have a question, I'm going to fucking answer it if I see it. If I see it. Why would I not pull for her? She's a human, you know? Maybe, maybe she got a divorce or maybe, like, something happened and it wasn't the best situation or whatever. But if she's trying to take care of her kids, like, who am I to not show her love as a human being? You know, people get it fucked up about, like, our group of friends. Like, we, we want to help everybody. We think collectively that the best way to help women is to help men. Like, I'm not a woman. I can't give a woman full-on life advice. I can tell her what I would do if I were a woman, what I think I would do from the shoes I'm sitting in now which is not a complete perspective of a woman's life. I can't, like, I can't act like I know what it's like, but I can tell her what a, what a high-level man is looking for and what I would want to see from a woman, and hopefully that'll be helpful. But if she asks me a business question, I'll also help her as well. I love women completely. I love people. And there's nothing wrong with us helping both sides. We don't let women in the war room because we don't feel like it's our place. You know, If women want to get together and, and take in the content of Red Pill or, or some other type of content online and they think that was collectively helping them. I'm all for that. And so would Andrew. Andrew would be all for that as well, man. We don't just hate women or, or only love men, man. We, we, everybody, bro. Collectively, you have to have men and women working together in unison to create some kind of harmony that's at least going to be good for a family and children. So um, I've got nothing but love for, for women. And I would tell women the same thing about trauma. 
go be your own woman. You're better than that. Get up. You are strong. You know, it does take a certain strength to be a woman, even in a feminine role. 100%. You have to know yourself better than anything else to be able to be in your true feminine and right. to be able to turn up to the world as your true feminine self right. and, sit within, especially, and sit within that frame. And especially in 2023, it. because you're going to get attacked for being a feminine woman. 100%. You know, people are going to attack you. Like, how how could you, like, you know. How could you want to be submissive? Yeah. Oh, I can't believe that. I would never. Oh, really? Because I know some women that are submissive in my life, and they're set up. Set up, and they're the ones laughing. You know, what about those women? And you're still working, sleeping with a bunch of dudes? Get the fuck out of here. You want to talk about trauma? There's some trauma for your ass. You know, getting ran through all the time off of Tinder crazy you know and and you know what that just shows a low self-worth within yourself and it's the self-worth that you have to have first and foremost before yeah. you can elevate to the levels that you're talking about if you yeah. if you if you if you lack the self-worth piece you can't elevate calling promiscuity being a bad bitch is going to rot a woman's soul out while she's sitting there judging a woman that is inside of a frame of a strong man and you think the the woman that's being submissive is losing. I promise you the one that's being submissive and making the man feel like he's doing a great job by providing and making him feel appreciated. He's working his ass off to make her life an absolute dream. Meanwhile, you're still on the apps drinking box wine, thinking it's sex in the city and your soul's riding out. Good luck. It's the influences though. It's the podcast. It's like the caller daddy podcast. It's like, all them highly feminine podcasts that are highly sexualized around women as well that kind of drive women to believe that they need to be this kind of character, this only fans model. Right. Well, be smarter than that. Be smarter than that. Understand the manipulation that's happening to you. A lot of women that talk about being a bad bitch and doing all these other things, they're just coping because they've not run across the right man that they want to get behind yet. And if they were to run into that man, if he took her, because I think that you can ruin it, you can get to a certain place where a guy like me, a guy like Tate, will look at you and be like, no, you've had too much. There's no way I would ever take care of you. You understand what I'm saying? And so you can ruin that, that sacred thing about being a woman. You know, by, the sacred is the innocence. It's the innocence or, or not being prom- overly promiscuous. If, if, if a guy knows that you've had sex with 100 men or 50 men or 20 men, he'll have sex with you. But he's probably not going to wife you up in any way. He's probably not going to want to provide for you in any way because you've created a scenario where all the, the true pure purity in you is gone. So why would he not go to a younger woman and just try to get that before the world gets a hold of her where he can mold her into the feminine woman that he wants to raise his children, by the way? It's not just about the man. Why would you put kids in a woman that's been overly promiscuous? If she doesn't respect herself like that, is she going to respect your child when, she's in, when, the, when the baby's in the womb? Is she going to foster and love that child if she doesn't love herself? Isn't that why a man would want a woman with a pure heart and and a feminine frame so she can nurture and create an atmosphere where that baby felt safe to not have to close up and think and be able to be a person that can have personality and do well in the world? Aren't you betting on the woman when you put a baby inside of her? Aren't you betting that she's a safe, loving place for your child? Aren't you doing that? You are. So by having a woman that's for the streets... And putting a kid in her, aren't you rolling the dice and playing a bit of roulette that she's just going to turn it around all of a sudden? That's why these young women shouldn't listen to all this bullshit, all this bad bitch bullshit. They're ruining themselves before they even have an opportunity for that man to come along. Now, we're trying to build those men as fastly as we can. Take responsibility. Be a man. If you get a girl pregnant, take care of that family fully. But you need to pick the right cloth of woman. And so hopefully we can help men become better so women can let go and trust a man that is strong enough to provide and protect and provision, not in a simpy way, but as the masculine dominant role that society actually needs for families to to actually stick and do well together. That way there can be some good kids. My mom and dad have been married 45 years. It's very much he has a role, she has a role. And when you watch that, when I've watched that myself growing up and I've, yeah, grow, yeah. I've grown up in that environment, it's hard for me to not want that for myself because yeah. that is, that is what I've seen every day of my life. Well, dude, I'm gonna be honest with you, man. I didn't see it work at all. It was a shit show. My childhood, 
It was horrible in, in regards to like how it should go. But I don't have any fucking trauma over it. I see it in the comments sometimes. They'll be like, oh, your childhood must have hurt you. Dude, not really. Not really. It happened. Well, you it, wouldn't be where you are now if you hadn't been had your childhood. Yeah. Like, and, and I wouldn't be talking about family and, and kids and, and like, you know, what it takes for a man to want to support and provide for a woman. I don't have any issues from my past. I'm simp- all. If anything, I just have a better understanding of what wrong looks like, you know. And I'm not even blaming anybody. I got no hate in my heart for my mother or my father at all. You know, I just have an understanding of what happened. So, so again, you don't have to then choose to repeat it because you understand. Yeah, yeah, but that, it's not that, this yeah, trauma shit. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm like, oh, that happened. I was really sad. Yeah, I was also but people fucking, wrap it up as trauma. Yeah, they wrap it up as trauma. But me, I look at, it, I was like, oh man, I was really sad. I was crying. It really hurt to see that. Yeah, I was also fucking seven. Yeah. You know, now thirty years later, I'm thirty seven years old. I'm a grown ass man. I can dis- disattach from that, you know? I run my life, not some shit that happened to me when I was a little boy. That's what becoming a man is. It's taking responsibility. It's understanding what happened and letting it go. It's over. There's no trauma. Trauma's bullshit. Unless you went to war and you have some kind of PTSD, some real, real issues, I, I will never disrespect a, a veteran. If a, vet- if a veteran says he has trauma, bro, okay, the fine. I'm not, I'm not saying that about a vet. We should take better care of our veterans, and especially in America. But as a man that went through some shit, might have got roughed up a little bit as a kid, saw his parents have a, have a rough time. Dude, you don't have trauma. Yeah. You have an issue of becoming a man. And I just want to give you the freedom to let go of that. You now have permission to let go and become the man that you want to be and then move forward and create a better life for the children that you have. That's what being a hero looks like. Not living in the past, attaching some bullshit trauma tag to yourself so you can go around and mope around to get attention if you want that as your identity stay the fuck away from me there's there was one scenario where i watched a war veteran talking about the d-day landing and how he came onto the beach and seeing his friends that he had grown up with dying beside of him and the story he can't help but touch your heart and seeing it that's the kind of man that when I see those men cry, it, it brings ultimate tears to my eye because I, I feel every part of that pain that that man's, the things that that man has seen essentially are things that w- probably some of us can't even comprehend. Yet we're crying about stuff, you know, on, on how many sexes there are on and stuff like that, which doesn't even comprehend the same level of thought process. Right. And that's where we are. As a, that's That's kind of where we are as a, as a as a nation, as a as a people, so do you think that that was all preordained to to that structure from the the matrix, so to speak, as you speak of? I don't even care whether it was preordained or not. It just needs to be stopped. How many kids from the eighties came out and said, "I think I want to cut my genitals off"? Probably not many, because it wasn't not even an idea in their mind. They're having transgender dancing shows in front of young kids, putting this in their face. Kids know and hear and understand what's going on at a very, very young age. If you are promoting this in front of your kids and giving them this idea before they're even an adult, making them think that they might be something else, maybe they just haven't found their way yet. They've not even hit puberty yet. Doing these things and mutilating kids' genitals before they're an adult is absolutely child abuse. You want to talk about a death penalty. You'll kill the person for molesting a child, but allowing the child to cut his genitals off before he's even hit puberty, I find to be just as bad. And that, and that, it's fucking bullshit. It needs to stop. I don't care where it came from. It needs to fucking stop. And we have to stand up as Americans or as parents or as people and say, these people are fucking criminals. And the shit needs to stop. So define what the matrix is to you. I don't use the word matrix much. It's, it's something that Andrew uses. I, I guess I, w- I would say this about my view of, of what he calls the matrix. Um, to me, I would define the matrix as the laws that are in place that support degeneracy. Having a bunch of kids out of wedlock and getting paid to do it cash flowing off those kids because you get enough assistance from the government and taxpayers that you don't even have to work when you can, when it makes more sense 
for you to get government assistance than it does for you to go to work. And we have fucked up as a nation in, in making our laws and, and our assistance programs. The way that we currently spend money to have proxy wars and send millions and millions of dollars overseas or pick fights that we don't need to be fighting to have profitable wars needs to stop. The divide between men and women needs to stop. Making people be accountable for their actions needs to be promoted instead of handicapping them with trauma or feeling dis disenfranchised or, or left out of society. We need to get back to where results matter and race and gender doesn't and get to where the people that produce are the ones that get rewarded, not the ones that get taken from to give to the people that don't. It's very, very basic common sense. We need to get America back where it was, where you have all the opportunity in the world, which means that if you work really hard, they don't take it from you and give it to other people while they print out money and fight wars for profit. Well, it, what they do is they obviously give the Ukraine money. The Ukrainians have to essentially buy weapons from the from the manufacturers that they preordain. Plus, they get a kickback for doing it, both both their government and the American government. So it's just a, it's just a, it's just a money wash for taxpayers' dollars to get them out of America and back into the pockets of the rich. And you know America. what that is? That's stealing life energy. Hundred percent. It's stealing life energy. When the basic man gets up and works his ass off every day and can no longer pay and provide for his family the way he could, let's say in the fifties, how can he even get respect in his own house? You're stealing his life energy from him by printing out dollars and sending it to wherever you want or these bullshit prerogatives that they have in government. E- even the socialist. E- even in World War Two, the American banks were funding both sides of the war and profiting off both. Even even in World War Two and and beyond that, every, there isn't a, there isn't a war in in the history that I know of that hasn't been an event where the the leading power of the time hasn't profited from both sides of it. There isn't and a lot of money in war. G. There's a there's a there's a lot of money. There's a lot of there's not a lot of money in peace. That's why when Trump was in power and there wasn't any wars. If Trump if Trump would have been in office, this Ukraine war wouldn't have happened. No way, not a chance, no not a chance. Else. Putin don't want that fucking smoke, bro. Why why are we going Why are we going to try to criminalize a man that would have stopped a war? Criminalize a man that was actually helping the black community more than Obama ever fucking did. More jobs, more jobs through every generation of of Native Americans and stuff right. like that. Unemployment way down. Right. The economy was firing. Right. Going to the moon. And then what did it take for them to stop it? A cladic, a huge event, cladicomismic event just blew the whole thing out the water. And then that, and then all of a sudden we get to vote from home. Hmm. Interesting. But people were celebrating at that time, Justin, because obviously a lot of money was being printed and put into the, put into the pockets of the, of the, of the everyday worker. So people, especially I was living in Australia at the time. And people were getting thousands of dollars a week to stay at home on these parachute payments. We're about to go into a time now where are you I, talking? Are you talking about the stimulus checks? Stimulus checks, yeah. How much were the stimulus checks though? There t- some of these people were getting like one, two, th- one and a half thousand dollars a week. Right. But at the same time, isn't it isn't it hurting your purchasing power if you're not working? Doesn't it hurt the purchasing power of not only an individual but a country? Is if the inflation of money is bigger than GDP? I, this is what this is what pe- I don't feel people understand. They we're, don't because we're, they're we're not we're financially a, educated. We're we're about to pay a massive price in the global economy, I believe, for this mass amount of printed of money, of which there will be another wealth transfer on the back of that. So yeah, there will what, be the rich will get richer. So what what is gonna what is coming in your opinion? Like is it is it going to be a cat? Is it going to be a GFC I, I, times ten? Or, or I think I think I'll have. I think we live in a very very hard to predict time in the world right now. I think it makes most sense to see how this next election goes. It's really the wild wild west, isn't it? So say so say Biden gets reelected. That's your government. What happens to the global economy, in your opinion, on that point? 
it continues to inflate. It'll just continue to inflate. And I think the war will drag out. And we, we're we just going to be in really hard times for quite a while. And we might even see some kind of real, real, I don't want to say depression, because I'm not an economist. But I will say that I think that we're not we're not in a very good place um, when it comes to money. And I think BRICS will get stronger. I think Russia will get stronger. I think China will get stronger. I think China's grasp on Africa and everything across the board will get stronger. And if Biden wins again, it it really doesn't look good for not only America's economy, but like you say, the world economy, because most people are attached to us in that way. So how should this audience position themselves to make sure that they're on the right side of the transfer of wealth that happens? It always has it always has to come down to your personal GDP, your personal production. You could look at a country's GDP against inflation, or you, and you could, but that goes all the way down to the individual. All you can do is control your circumstances, your your work habits, your ethics, your ability to create income for you and your family, and try to get on the side of it that benefits you. Um, America is still open free market at this time, and so. What I'm doing as an American is I'm buying the hell out of real estate, and maybe you can't do it to the scale I can. I have 13 years in a business that feeds me money, allows me to do it. But on some small level, every individual can take control of their own certain situation and either put enough back or buy enough assets to be in a position to be stronger than the person next to them and take care of their family the way a man should. And in regards to women, I think that identifying that strong men still need to be had and accepting that even if you have to work really, really hard until that man comes along, understanding it's okay to be in a feminine frame if you need to or if you find a man that you can trust enough to let go in that way. And I think that's completely fine. And don't let anybody ever manipulate you into thinking otherwise. Yeah. With everything that's gone on with Andrew, where were you when you first heard the news that the boys had been put into... I was at home in Louisiana, actually, when I found out. And what was your first kind of thoughts on this? Because obviously... I thought they'd be out in a couple of days when I first heard it. About day four, I couldn't sleep, man. It bothered me, man, bad. Not that there's anything to worry about. I knew they weren't guilty. I knew that nothing wrong had been done. I... It just dawned on me that maybe that they're not going to get a, a fair shake at it because all the evidence is there. you know, All the footage is there, everything. Their whole house is recorded. So if they needed to know truth, they could just take the truth and look at it. They're holding them in, in, in jail with no charges. Even on this house arrest, they've still not charged them. Which makes me feel like the longer they keep them with no charges, the more that they're going to try to cook something up to justify the injustice that they've created. They know that Andrew's going to make them look foolish. My fear is their fear of that and trying to come up with something to justify what they've done. That's my biggest fear. Not that Andrew's done anything to get accused of or to get charged for. That they're going to create something to justify the mess that they've made for themselves with two innocent men. Has it been pushed by a Western government or do you think it's That's right? my largest fear yeah. is that a Western government put their thumb on Romania and can make Romania look like the little third world country that has crooked laws and that can do whatever they want, but really it's being pushed by a larger hand. That is actually my biggest fear, particularly with the amount of money that the UK has put into creating anti-Tate messages in schools. Are you talking about the guy that wants you to be sober, do push-ups, make money, take care of your parents, that fucking guy? That's the guy you're worried about, dickheads? Yeah, right. Why don't you worry about the bullshit and the crime that's going on in your streets and why I can't wear my fucking watch in London? Why don't you put $2 billion into that shit? Yeah, it's true. You're, you're, not, you're not wrong. You can't. You can't. No, I'm not wrong. Yeah. Uh, p- spending $2 billion to suppress the message of a man that wants you to be sober, do push-ups, be respectful to your parents, make money, take care of your family, that guy, but you can't stop knife crime in your streets. It's a fucking joke. Yeah, you certainly can't wear a Rolex or anything no. like that in London. It, L- London, to me, was a phenomenal city in the 90s. Great. You could, you could it's go. one of the greatest cities of all time, bro, London. Yeah. 
it, 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 it pains me to say that you can't walk around in London and feel safe. You certainly wouldn't want a woman, woman with any nice stuff walking around in certain areas to feel safe. Central, yeah, you can kind of get away with to a certain degree. But even then, like the, I saw a guy the other week in a, in a Bugatti. He's, 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 yeah, the guy pulled up in the in the bike and started slamming yeah, it with a hammer. Slam it. His yeah. window wasn't even down. Yeah, like, he was trying to bust the window. glass. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that that's happening in a, in what they term as a first world country, which is why I think that a lot of people are now moving to countries like Dubai because they're sick of having nice things and and people just trying to take them for nothing. Bro, I could leave this Rolex on the counter downstairs and it would stay there. I come back five hours later, it'd be there. In London, they don't even they don't even ask you to take the watch off. They'll just chop your fucking hand off. What, what do you, do you see yourself moving? On? I know you've bought a home out here. Do you see yourself yeah. living here more more full time? It depends. I you know, obviously, I have a lot of business in America. America, in my experience, has not turned into what London has turned into. Yeah, there's neighborhoods that you might want to stay out of, but. By and largely, what's happening in London is that people are coming into the the right neighborhoods to be in, and London's not doing anything about it. I still want to believe in states like Texas, Louisiana, Florida. You know, you get shot for doing things like that there, wouldn't you? Fucking, I got a gun on me. Still my watch in Louisiana. Still my watch in Florida, cowboy. Got something for you. You know, it's not the same game. At least, at least in America, you can still have gun rights. And you can still fight for your family and what's right. You know, come try to steal my watch off my wife and kids. Dude, I'll shoot your ass and I'll sleep like a fucking baby tonight. That's at least what America's got right. How long do you think America's got left with gun laws where guns are, are still a licensed thing that you can I don't carry? Know. I think that'd probably be the last straw for me. If I can't protect my family or families, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, if any woman I'm with, I, I got to worry about five dudes running up on me with a fucking knife and I can't protect the people I care about, then I'm out. That would probably be my last straw, if I'm being honest. How do you feel different, though? Because obviously, Dubai, you don't, have a, you don't have a gun or don't have to license Yeah, but you don't need a gun in Dubai, do you? Yeah. You don't need a gun. They don't want the fucking smoke. That, and that's the thing, and that's what Dubai gets so right, is that there's actually repercussions for what you did. You know, I, I say this shit all the time. If you would just take a handful of people that had a violent crime in America and publicly... Do what you have to do. Like, everybody knows if you do this shit, you will fucking die. You will get killed, like, on, on site if they got... Because they have camera footage of people doing these crimes in America. There's enough cameras now, enough people are caught. If you get caught doing a violent crime that you get executed on rip, like, here's the footage, you did it, boom, dead, you'd have a Dubai real fast in America. And I'm all for it. Because you would, you would kill a couple people to save the lives of millions yeah, people. just a little bit of responsibility for your actions. It wouldn't take many people get getting getting what they had coming to them for America to turn it around real fucking fast. Well, no one here wants to know what a prison in the desert looks like. That's right. that's essentially it. No one wants to no one wants to see that. No one wants to feel that. So everyone just leaves. Everyone but all these alone. people mug, like mugging and killing people on the streets for no reason. Old ladies and shit. You know. If people were held responsible for that in a real way, very publicly, and it was well known that nobody was going to riot for you because you tried to fucking kill somebody and you got what you had coming for you, and there was some actually order and discipline like Dubai has, America could clean it up real fast. Giuliani did it in New York in the 80s. Now, he didn't kill people, but you understand what I'm saying. Some real discipline, some real order, because the majority of people are really, really good people. But if you go sending this message that you can do whatever you want, spitting in cops' faces and jumping cops and beating them up, and then if the cop fights back or if a person fights back, then they got to go to court for manslaughter and try to fight for their own freedom just because they protected their family is fucking bullshit. America could fix it. Dubai certainly has. Humans are humans everywhere. If they know there's a real repercussion for being violent and acting a certain way that's unjust and unlawful, if there's actually a repercussion and they showed it to everyone, here's the repercussion and it was enough to make people stop, they would. They certainly would. So the trigger then for obviously moving your family out of America would come at the gun laws being changed or too many threats on your on your family. You'd 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 pull them out and come you'd rescind you'd rescind the citizenship and come to Dubai, would you? I'm not about running, but in, in a scenario where you can't even fight back for what's right, yeah, that'd be my ticket out. Yeah. So, so why why did obviously you've you've made a lot of money in America and through real estate and everything like that and you've stayed within America to make it 
yeah. is paid and negated the taxes with real estate. Why are so many Americans doing this dumb thing where they go to Puerto Rico and living in Puerto Rico and living live in this obscure life where they have to spend so many days out of the country? Why are they not structuring themselves the same way that you have to get around these problems? I think they're just in a different vehicle. A lot of those people going to Puerto Rico are crypto people, yeah? I, I've seen people with, with real estate go there as well. I just can't understand it. Look, maybe it's worth it to them. I think I'd get a little island fever. If I was going to do it, I'd just full send do it. You know, I, I don't think that America would ever make it easy to renounce citizenship. I, I've heard that the embassies are making it very hard and making it very delayed to do it. Um, but again, I'm not, I'm not trying to renounce my citizenship. I'd love to stay an American forever. It's just about us collectively coming together as Americans and putting our foot down for what we know is right. You know, that's all. That's all we have to do. Like, I don't have a plan to try to leave America unless America gets in a place where I can no longer stand behind it. And that's mostly going to start with my personal freedom and my ability to take care of my family and my children and, and anybody that I care about in my life. And until then, I don't have a plan to leave. Other than your primary dwelling here, are you going to invest more into Dubai or are you looking at other countries to, 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 to put things about? It doesn't matter to me. I'll make money anywhere. Money. I'll take the paper. You know what I mean? But again... I'm not getting out the tax situation anyway, so it doesn't matter. I am American, and I ha- don't even have a problem, really, with paying American tax. As long as you can offer me, my family, and the people I care about safety, and you hold people accountable for their own actions. And that, that, that's from safety against crime, not defunding the police, maybe paying teachers and cops a little bit better, appreciating the man that builds the buildings and builds the roads that, that we have to have for society to work. And making people take accountability in their own lives and having jobs so the people that do work their ass off don't have to give it away to socialist tax things like, you know, people that have too many kids and start to make money off food stamps and shit like that. So um, as long as we can collectively get together as Americans and start doing the right thing for the people that work hard, that are the backbone of America, I'm fucking staying. Yeah, I I honestly love how proud you are of america and just being an american because i think in the uk we're so it, it, if anyone does well in the uk and i know rob told you this on on the podcast you did with him but when anyone does well in the uk or starts pop their head above the the parapet so to speak everyone starts shooting at you everyone starts shooting at you whereas i kind of feel with america everyone everyone celebrates everyone else's success and kind of encourages you to go for it. is that is that kind of a right estimation i that? think that america is the most entrepreneurial country by a yeah. long shot yeah and most of most of great entrepreneurial success that you see on, online, particularly, is coming out of America. But what what is the key difference in in, in what's driving that though? Because we're the fucking goat, bro. <laughs> we're <the> goat. <laughs> no, but, but we're say, fucking but, up, right? Yeah. We are fucking up in some places. No, 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 I know, I know, I know that I know all the places that America in the outside world is perceived to have fucked up i get that but why are there more millionaires in america than anywhere else and why and why is it more entrepreneurial like you say what is the key ingredient it's our, our culture our culture is entrepreneurial it is everything about it everybody wants some of our sauce that's why y'all watch our movies listen to our music that's why you watch our youtubers more like america is the shit we have the best team y'all don't want this fucking heat dude all we have to do is not rot from the inside out that's why I won't get off the bandwagon of America. Why don't we make being American cool? Why don't we make that happen again? Like it was in the 80s, in the 70s, in the 90s. So you, why don't you make it cool to be American? Why don't we fly our own fucking flag instead of putting Ukraine's flag on our fucking house? Why not do that? That's what I get upset about. I get shit for saying America's a goat on Twitter. Oh, you're trash, you're trash, you're trash. America's trash, it does this, it fights process. Yeah, no shit, but we could fix it. I'm not disagreeing when, when people get angry at America and shit on it. I'm, what I get angry at is disagreeing with America and taking your ball and going home instead of fighting for something that's great. And it's been great for a very long time. But I just, I want to under, I want to truly want to understand what that secret ingredient is that makes you guys want to get after it, entrepreneurial and all this stuff that we're missing then. What, 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 what are you seeing that's missing in Dubai, for argument's sake, that's missing? I think Dubai has it. Well, well first of all, Dubai, Dubai is just a city. Dubai, Dubai is just a city that a bunch of people come to. It's nothing but an all-star team from a bunch of other countries. Yeah. So it's, it's not this, it's, it's a spirit that comes from 
the gentleman that made Dubai a great place, but it is just a city. It's more like the new Switzerland than it is this old heritage of grabbing your life by the bootstraps and having a dream. Most people have already lived the American dream or the British dream or the the dream of, of being an entrepreneur somewhere in some other country, and they're meeting here to collaboratively be in an atmosphere that has a life about it. I believe cities have souls. I really do. Like Miami has a soul, bro. It's like popping. It's like entrepreneurs, kid in a Lambo, old guy on a yacht, built this big company, doing this, this, or this. You're in the atmosphere. And Dubai has a soul. It has a soul of entrepreneurship. America as a whole has a soul of entrepreneurship. You can go there and make money and be ambitious, and you're not suppressed by a government. The government does let you play in America. You can start a business tomorrow in every state if you want to. You're going to pay your taxes. You might pay taxes to some things that you disagree with, which I certainly do, and I understand that. Those are the things I want to fix. But America has an open market to where, in Tom Wheelwright's book, Tax-Free yeah. Wealth, yeah. his goal, in my opinion, is to pivot your mindset of someone that's stealing from you as the government puts out tax incentives for people that want a ball. Well, the, the tax document's 5,000 pages long, I believe, in America. And, only thir- and it's gray. And only, th- and, and only 30 to 60 pages of the 5,000 are things that are actually taxing you and, and trying to be put on you, whereas the other... 4,000 odd pages are all pages where you can use as deductions against your business and against your, right. against your bill, right? Right. And so doesn't that incentivize you to go build a business and create jobs and create housing? Governments make tax laws based off things they need because they know the, gov- the private sector is always going to be faster. And I think a lot of people copy America's tax laws in, in major ways. It's more, it's more of some of the things that we shouldn't do that I have a problem with, some of the things that we get involved in that we might not should get involved in. But also, to America's credit, we've create, created globalization in a lot of ways with our Navy, protecting other countries, letting things happen, et cetera, et cetera. If we deglobalize, America's going to be fine. There's going to be some other places going to be quite fucked. Let, let, let America pull its Navy ships from all over the world. It's not going to be good for a lot of people. Well, Taiwan would be gone for a start. Boom, gone. It'd be first chip to fall, wouldn't it, Taiwan? Right. So we police a lot of the world, you know. And so maybe the world's paying a little bit of tax for that with our inflation. But it's the internal things in America that really piss me off. It's the internal hatred. It's the, what about flying the flag? What about saying the Pledge of Allegiance, you know? Now, is that indoctrinizing kids? You could argue that, especially if you, if you make it around, like, sending kids to fight wars that, you know, we shouldn't be fighting, right? I, I'm, I'm, I'm all about that. But at the same time, we don't even take care of these veterans the way we should. That's a problem for me. It's the internal shit that really bothers me about America. you know. But I'm not a fucking sellout quitter. Like Until we get in a point where I feel like I can't protect the people that I love and care about, I'm about staying. Here, take the tax from me. You created the atmosphere for me to make it. I'm about it. But you better fucking protect your own. And that's why the man that runs this place can walk through that mall right now and without security. Joe yeah. Biden cannot. Because we, as Americans, a political system, I don't feel like we take care of our own the way the man in Dubai does. Yeah. And when we get to a point where that's so far gone, I don't see it recovering, then I will consider leaving. Until then, it's red, white, and fucking blue. He, he literally, the uh, town was in a restaurant a couple of weeks back, and he was sat two or three tables down just on his, just on his own with, with his son having a meal. That's how safe this place it is. Isn't, isn't that what being a good leader should look like? You treat your people so well you can walk amongst them? Isn't that what it should look like? You think I'm worried about walking to a job site with my men there? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They'll be happy to see me. Hey, boss, I've not seen you. And then I start talking shit to them. Like, that's what being a good leader is. You can walk amongst your people. You want a good litmus test of whether you're a good leader? Can you walk amongst your people or not without security? Do they love you because you take care of your own? And I think sometimes another thing we get wrong in America is that I don't think Biden's trying to walk amongst the people. Not the way Trump would. Not the way Trump would. It's a puppet government anyway, isn't it? It's pulled by Obama anyway. Still run, the country's still run by Obama anyway, if, we, if, we're, if we're actually truly honest about it and how it breaks down, obviously, with the, with the, with the house that or he look has. at BlackRock. Yeah, there's a, there's, a, there's, a lot, there's a lot we could dive into. But one, the, one, the one thing I, I want to tick off before, before, obviously, I let you get on with your day is, obviously, what are Andrew's 
and Tristan's thoughts now on on what plays out for them in this narrative in terms of like what's what's them what's their next moves all all that they're going to do now is let the truth be known just like they've been doing they're going to keep pushing if you notice Andrew's not stopped tweeting he's not stopped speaking to the world he knows he's on the right mission any man that does anything great will go under fire Andrew is simply going through his I don't think Andrew's plans have changed at all Andrew's just being attacked from a machine that wants to silence him because he has the hearts and minds of young men that want to become better and do something with their life. And that could be counterintuitive to the narrative that's out there right now. So I don't think Andrew's and Tristan's plans have changed at all. If anything, they're just as much involved as they've always have been. They already know that they're innocent and they're just going to continue to live in their truth. These men are built for war. They're going to be completely fine. I believe in them fully. And I suspect that once this is over, their their influence is going to 100x, and I can't wait for it. I honestly think as well it's going to backfire on a lot of people that thought they're going to put them back in their box. There's not really a lot they can hold them on, especially with these. You can't prove any of these allegations for any for any amount right. of doubt. And I think it's a great it's a great thing that you've stood by them, Tam stood by them, and everyone stood by them through through that time. You know, everyone that was in that brotherhood has all stood together, which has been been a beautiful thing to watch. But I just want to thank you again for your time on here today. Yeah. And it's been a, it's been an absolute pleasure. I love to see how passionate that you get about being an American and being from where you're from, you know, rather than a lot of us out there can take a lot from that, you know. I'll tell you this, man. What I've really learned over the past couple of years is the further I get away from home, the prouder I am of where I'm from. I love that. I love that. Yeah. And if there's one piece one pearl of wisdom that you could drop on this order. If you had to check out, leave all the real estate, leave everything behind, you couldn't take any of the assets with you, but you just had to leave one piece of golden pearl of wisdom for this audience that's going to help them move 1% forward in their life today, what would it be? Understand that you have complete control of your life. A man that can look in the mirror and know for it without a shadow of a doubt that you want the ball in your court to take the last shot in your life every day is a man that can walk out into the world and be stripped of everything and build it all back tomorrow. You are the compass of your own life. You have no traumas to hold on to. You have no past to live in. All you have is the man that you build. And when you can build a man that you truly trust in every way and you know without a shadow of a doubt that man will win because you trust him to win, you're the kind of man that can create a custom-made reality for yourself, your life, and the people that you love. I love that. I love that. That is beautiful. Guys, that is Justin Waller. And do me a solid favor. Like, subscribe, share this with your friends and your family. I think everyone needs to listen to this. Some some tough words in there, some tough things that you have to listen to in this environment. Much love. Thank you very much. Guys, do me a solid favor. Drop a comment below this video and let us know who you want on the podcast next.